All right, folks. So the FCC is proposing a new fee structure that will uh, greatly impact uh, amateur radio. And greatly impact is my words. Uh, your words may be a little bit different. But in this video, we're going to discuss those. We're going to talk about them a little bit. And I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. So go ahead and post them below. And while you're at it, you can click the like button, the subscribe button, the share button. If you do that, it'll make you happy. I'm going to include links below for all of the websites that are shared in today's video. Now our journey begins over on the Amateur Radio Relay League or the ARRL website. Under the news section, there is a topic or an article titled FCC proposes to reinstate amateur radio service fees. And it says amateur radio licensees would pay $50 fee for each amateur radio license application if the FCC adopts rules it proposed this week. Included in the FCC fee proposal are applications for new licenses, renewal, and upgrades to existing licenses, and vanity call sign requests. Excluded are applications for administrative updates such as change of address or annual regulatory fees. So what this means is that when you go and you get your technician license, you're paying a $50 fee, and you're likely paying a fee to the club that did the license uh, processing for you. It's usually a nominal fee, 10, 15, 20 bucks. It depends. I think uh, most of the online folks are charging, charging a fee right now as well. But what it also means is that if you upgrade your technician to a general or to um, a general to an extra, you're going to pay a $50 fee. What's unclear to me is that you may be a technician and say you test on the same day for general and extra. Are you paying a hundred dollars? It's a little unclear. Also, uh, I know that vanity call signs are quite popular, and uh, you'll see in certain forums or chat groups where people will apply for 10 different vanity call signs uh, because they're hoping to get one of them. Uh, it might not be the best one that they want, but uh, I could see that becoming quite a problem. I do think that there's a little bit of abuse when it comes to people applying for these vanity call signs uh, when people apply to a bunch of them. That's just my personal opinion. There's no need to get upset over that. It also says the FCC proposal contained a Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, NPRM, an MD Docket 2270, which was adopted to implement portions of the Repack Airwaves Yielding Better Access for Users of Modern Services Act of 2018, the so-called Ray Bombs Act. So the document for the NPRM is here. It's 114 pages. At least the link takes you to a document that's 114 pages. But the table of contents goes up to 245 pages. I'm not going to read all of this, and I don't expect anybody else to as well. But I believe somewhere around page 53 are the fee structure breakdowns for um, not just amateur radio services, but other services that are impacted by the new license fee recommendation. Also, the, uh, the, the, the Ray Bombs Act, I, there's a link to that here, and it's 891 pages, so I'm not thinking anybody's going to read this, but uh, it's a heck of a document, and I'll include a link below if you're the type that likes to stay up late at night reading this type of documentation. All right, back at the ARRL site, it says the act requires FCC switch from a congressionally mandated fee structure to a cost-based system of assessment. In its NPRM, the FCC proposed application fees for a broad range of services that use the FCC's universal licensing system, including amateur radio service. I know the GMRS is impacted as well. I didn't spend a whole lot of time reading it. Um, like I said, I really wasn't interested in that. I was more interested in hearing about the fee structure that's going to impact amateur radio service. Um, it says the statute excludes the amateur radio service from annual regulatory fees, but not from application fees for now. Um, annual regulatory fees, and I, I was actually uh, in a chat with a fellow from Australia, Hayden, and he was saying that they actually have to pay an annual regulatory fee in order to maintain their license. Um, these license structures are a little bit of a slippery slope, and once they start charging, they start charging a little bit more, and they start charging a little bit more. Applications for personal licenses are mostly automated and do not have individual staff calls for data input review, the FCC said in its NPRM. For these automated processes, new or major modifications, renewal, minor modifications, we propose a nominal application fee of $50. Due to automating the processes, routine ULS maintenance, and limited instances where staff input is required. Now, I work in IT. And one of the things that I can tell you is, is that there is a cost for setting up automated systems to process applications. 
Now, I'm going to assume, and that's probably a bad thing, that these systems that process these ULS licenses uh, are probably shared resources, are probably cloud-based resources where you uh, are pay, have a pay structure or cost structure based off of the amount of compute, power, storage, and internet connectivity that you pay for. If you have a system that's designed uh, that costs you $50 to process an application, you need to go back and you need to re-architect your solution. Uh, a real company in the real world would not be able to stay in business if they did something like this. Um, so maybe that's why we have some of these uh, tax problems. I don't know. But $50 seems a little bit crazy. I do think that a licensing application fee might be appropriate, but it needs to be something that is more uh, reasonable and it needs to be something that um, uh, folks can afford, right? Like uh, I, some people can afford $50, no problems. But what I start to think about is people who are getting new into amateur radio, some of those are youngsters, some of those uh, might be folks on a single, uh, single income supporting an entire family. When you start talking about the club fee, the $50 fee, getting uh, uh, maybe you, you bought some training materials or some books and then buying your equipment, it seems like it starts to add up fast. And the big thing here on the Smoke and Ape channel is, is that we want to make amateur radio accessible. We want it to be easy to use. We want it to be easy to get in, to get licensed, um, easy to understand, because our ultimate goal is to have more people using amateur radio service and more people on the air. And when I see a $50 uh, fee like this, to me, that's a roadblock and that limits accessibility. And I'm not a fan of it. Five, $10 license cost. Maybe that makes sense. Maybe you pay a license the first time and then your upgrades are free. I don't, I don't know. This, this, this doesn't seem right to me. It says the same fee would apply to all amateur radio service applications, including those for vanity call signs. We talked about that. Uh, it says, although there's currently no fee for vanity call signs in the amateur radio service, which I think might lead to a little bit of uh, abuse that we talked about earlier. We find such applications oppose similar costs in aggregate. The commission resources as a new application is therefore proposing a $50 fee. They're not proposing changes for or charges for administrative updates. Well, that makes sense because I just go to a website, update my information, and it should do that automatically. Um, it says for administrative updates and modifications, which are also highly automated, we find that it is a public interest to encourage licensees to update their own information without charge. The FCC proposes to assess a $50 fee for individuals who want a printed copy of their license. It seems a little bit excessive to me. Um, it seems a little bit of ex expensive. If it costs you 50 bucks to print and stick something in an envelope and mail it, again, you probably need to take a look at your workflow and you need to look at what you're, what you're spending your money on. Um, it says that they do propose a $50 fee to cover the cost of their services. The Ray Bombs Act does not exempt filing fees for amateur radio service. The FCC dropped the assessment for fees for vanity call signs several years ago. Deadlines for comments or, re or reply comments will be determined once the NPRM appears in the Federal Register. File comments using the FCC's electronic comment filing system, ECFS, and you can get that link here, posting to the MD docket 2270. This docket is already open for accepting comments, uh, even though deadlines have not yet been set. So I guess what I'm going to encourage folks to do is go out there and make a comment and let them know your opinions. Um, you know, this is our opportunity to make sure that, that, that laws like this don't get passed. While I'm not for bankrupting the F FCC, um, I do think that maybe an appropriate licensing schedule is merited or even warranted. I'd like to see some more information on that. But this, this seems a little outrageous to me. Anyhow, let me know your thoughts below. Thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it.